key thing to remember when you're doing histograms is to remember the histogram triangle. And it has frequency at the top, frequency density at the bottom left, which I'll explain in a minute, and class width in the bottom right. So it's frequency at the top, and then frequency density times class width beneath. You, it might be worth writing that down and just noting down the definitions when we get to them. Now, typically in the question, you're given two of these things, and you have to work out the third. So here's a very typical question. Jan did a survey of the number of moves chess games lasted at his lunchtime club. His results are shown in the table below. Number of moves, 25 to 30, 30 to 35, etc., and the frequency. The question is, complete the histogram for three marks. Now, what have they given us? They've given us the frequencies, as in how many times it happened. Okay, so we've got the top of the triangle. They've given us the class width, actually, because each of these are classes between 25 to 30, 30 to 35. So the class width, for example, of this group, 25 to 30, is 5. The class width of this group would be 10. So what's missing? Well, what's missing is the frequency density. And what that is, is the height, the y-axis of the histogram. With the frequency density, you can then draw your histogram. So let's see how that would work. If we cover up frequency density, what do we have to do with the triangle? If we cover it up, we're left with frequency divided by class width. So let's work it out. 55 divided by 5 would be 11. 39 divided by 5 would be 7.8, I think. 68 divided by 5, uh, 13.6. Uh, obviously, you can do these on the calculator in the real exam. 32 divided by 10 would be 3.2, and 6 divided by 20 would be 0.3. Notice I did all of them before I started drawing the histogram. Now we know the frequency densities, we can start drawing our histogram. So the group 25 to 30 goes up to 11. But what's the biggest group? It's this one, it goes up to 13.6, so we can use that information to do our scale. So let's do at the top, for example, 14, because we know the biggest is 13.6. We had to do all of them before we knew which one the biggest was going to be. And let's do it going up in twos, for example. It would be 10, 8, 6, 4, and 2. And that's going to be the scale we use to draw the histogram. The first group goes up to 11, between 25 and 30, goes up to 11, so 11, halfway between 10 and 12. The next group, between 30 and 35, goes up to 7.8, should be just under 8. This would be on lined paper, so it would be even more accurate. 35 to 40 goes up to 13.6, be about there. 40 to 50 goes up to 3.2, so it's a bit wider and shorter. That's what tends to happen with histograms. Wider and shorter. And finally, the last group, 50 to 70, only goes up to 0.3, which is very low. So like that. And there we go, we've done our histogram. The next type of question gives you the histogram, and you have to work out all sorts of things. So let's look at that. Jan recorded the next 450 games at his chess club, and the results are shown on the histogram below. Write down how many games took more than 50 moves. Well, we can see that the number of games that took more than 50 moves are represented by these blocks over here. Because here's the number of moves, and there's 50. So we can see it's four blocks, but how much is each block? To do that, what you need to do is count the number of blocks. So let's do that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12... 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, two half blocks become 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 22.5. So we have 22.5 blocks. But how many people does that represent? Well, it tells us in the question that represents 450 games, chess games. So that's the frequency. 25 blocks is 450 games. Divide both sides by 22.5. So that would be one block. That divided by 22.5 would be 20. So one block is 20 games. And with that information, we can answer part I. How many games took more than 50 moves? Well, there's one, two, three, four blocks. So four blocks would be 80 games. 
Now, next question. Estimate the mean number of moves per game. Now, if this was a table instead of a histogram, you'd say, oh, that's easy. Anytime it's estimate the mean, you just get the midpoint times the frequency. Midpoint times frequency. And that's exactly what you do on here. We do the midpoint between 25 and 30 times by the frequency. Notice how we didn't even need to work out the frequency density in this case. Obviously, in some questions, you would have to work out frequency density using the triangle. So the midpoint is 27.5 times the frequency. But what is the frequency? Well, remember, each block is 20 games, so this is 60 games. 30 to 35 is looks like 6 blocks, so that would be 120 games, and etc., etc. So carrying on the calculations, you would get your calculator, and you would do, actually I had it all set up there, there you go. Look, 27.5 times 60, 32.5 times 120, etc. And it's all done out there. Then, press equals and you get the vast big total. But remember, for estimating the mean, you need to divide by how many people there are, or the total frequency. So we need to divide this by 450. And our answer becomes 40.5. So that means, on average, the mean number of moves per game would be 40.5. And now you have the triangle, you can do any histogram question.